Yes. On your projections. And it turned out that none of it was true. You painted a doomsday climate change scenario, farmers, city planners, taxpayers, none of it was correct. No. So you can't just admonish them now. You can't just look down your nose at them now and say, well, I can't, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you believe us, you silly bumpkin? Well, because of you, <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> Question of the day, was there an exact, can you pinpoint an exact moment when you started sort of tuning out uh, the progressive left's climate change alarmism, or was it more of a gradual, Thing. Now, for, yeah. comment below. I do want to hear from you guys. Now, first off, let me preface this. Of course, I am n in no way a climate change scientist expert, nor do I claim to be. That being said, neither are most of you. Yeah. Okay? And this is something that I would like to cover because uh, it affects real people's lives. And I think a big reason why fewer people believe in climate change than before is because the media and the left today, let's let's... Ignore the, let's ignore the science for a second. Put on the shelf for a second. That's going to be a soundbite. Ignore yeah. this. I'm not saying ignore no, 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 the no, no, Just for a minute. Put on the shelf for a second. Just a sec. The media completely berates and mocks Americans who don't believe specifically in their current man-made climate change predictions. Here you go. So when it comes to deniers, uh, I claim they're a problem. When Bill President Kennedy the sets us on a, uh, set us on a course for the moon, there were a number of people who made a serious case that it wouldn't be worth it. It was going to be too expensive. It was going to be too hard. It would take too long. But nobody ignored the science. Today's Congress, though, is full of folks who stubbornly and automatically reject the scientific evidence about climate change. Not really. There's that Gallup poll that came out last month, which found one in four Americans is skeptical of all the effects of climate change and thinks this issue's been exaggerated. Who gives a sh Okay, so it turns out that <laughs> Americans, uh, it's, actually, it's actually dropped by about 4% in the last two years. Yeah. Americans yep. who believe in man-made climate change. So let me explain to you why I think this might be the people. Let, let's, again, we're putting the science on the shelf for a second, the totality of the science. Mm, right. What does matter, I think, with a lot of Americans, if you're going to berate and admonish them, is a lot of these Americans live in middle America, okay? Yeah. Particularly in the Great Lakes states. And this is something, I lived through this, I'm from Michigan. The alarmism at that point, people were scared to high heaven by the climate change progressive left yeah. that the lakes were going to dry up very quickly. Lake Michigan, when measured just a few weeks measured? ago, <laughs> was at its lowest depth in any measured time in recent history. What we're seeing in global warming is the evaporation of our Great Lakes. It's a scary thing. He also enjoys a good leisure suit. So, <laughs> and here we have an article from USA Today. I remember this article. I think it was in 2012, 2013. They said it would take yeah. decades of rain, decades Consistent of rain, rain. heavy, heavy rain, just yeah. to return to normal. Okay, it took two years, five, six years later, hmm. records, record levels, huh. record levels. Here's something I want people to, to understand. If if you were wrong about this, for, and you told the rest of America in 2012 and 2013 that they they were all unequivocally wrong if they didn't wholesale 100% accept your premise, you and you chastise them. Well, where are we now? Lake Superior is already near record high levels. Oh, By May, mm, could reach a record nice. that was set in the mid 1980s. Mm. Lake Erie could reach record highs later this spring. Lake Michigan and Huron also expected to be much higher, much much higher than historically normal levels. It only took a few years. Yeah to get to significantly higher than normal levels. And I remember this because I was in Michigan and uh, my, my uh, grandmother-in-law, 96, yeah. has beachfront property that's been in, a, in the uh, the family for yeah. decades. Beautiful place. And they were saying, oh man, there's a, remember they said, oh, there's, there's uh, the beach now. You can see it, you can see how far out it is. It's all used yeah. to be covered in water. And then the water level rose so much, they lost their beach chips. <laughs> Everything was gone. They're gone. You also need to take into account that there's potentially more water being exported than ever before. At least yeah. that's what people thought, certainly in the last decade. Take Nestle, for example, uh, for their bottled water. I think they funnel, yeah, 400 gallons a minute. Oh, that's a lot. From the Great <laughs> A lot of water. <laughs> okay, 400, and it's going, and it's not like, for example, at one point, if you had a well, or if you uh, you were taking yeah. water from Lake Michigan, you lived in Michigan, you know, mm -hmm. with your filtration system, yeah. went through the ground back, and it's like, no, this is water that is being, 400 gallons a minute being taken out of Lake Michigan and shipped to Texas. It's <laughs> not going back into Lake like that, yeah. record highs, record highs. By the way, hit the notification bell if you're subscribed on YouTube because uh, apparently notification subscriptions don't mean a whole lot. Bookmark the page, join MuggleBladdersCounter.com slash Muggle if you haven't already and subscribe on iTunes, give us a rating. Here's the thing, um, Americans who believed you, uh, and of course the people who you didn't, those are the select who you didn't admonish. Th yeah. Their economies largely revolve around the Great yeah. Lakes. This is what's, so it's when life. you say levels will undeniably continue, and I'm just trying to present you with hopefully 
a little bit of understanding here. When you say levels will undeniably, undoubtedly continue to descend to record low levels due to climate change and exclusively climate change, they have to plan their seasons for things like more yeah. erosion, mm. less underpass room for waterway bridges. They have to plan um, extensive dredging of harbors. City engineering comes into play, not to mention the private businesses. They have to adjust their business models based on your projections of shorefront, water cleanliness, all of that. The same can be said, by the way, for climate change alarmists on farming and the crop yields in the Great Lakes area, which have had some record great yields as well. <laughs> they should have just been honest from the very beginning and take, taken the cautious approach and said, hey, something is happening. We do have record low levels right now. We need to figure this out and we need to be cautious. And yeah. instead they went way over and said, oh my God, they're going to disappear. <laughs> right, the right. world then, is going to but end. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The important thing is that it didn't happen. It didn't happen. Where yeah. And it doesn't right mean, and I get it, doesn't mean that all climate science is bunk. No. That's not what I'm saying. No. But what, it, what you do need to take into account here is that people base their lives yes. on your projections. And it turned out that none of it was true. You painted a doomsday climate change scenario. Farmers, city planners, taxpayers, they believe none of it was correct. No. So you can't just admonish them now. You can't just look down your nose at them now and say, well, I can't. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you believe us, you silly bumpkin? Well, because of you. <laughs> I don't believe you. You lied last time. You, you don't believe science? Again. No, no, no. This is like the science. Fire Festival. Just all over you. Again. Yeah, this is the Fire Fest. This <laughs> well, is Fire Fest, too. I, I mean, like, fire, I, I, fire fest, I, I believe fire. science. I don't believe politicians because, right. I mean, what, what exactly has the left not tried to claim is because of climate change? <laughs> Legal it's immigration, true. refugees, climate change, yeah. uh, Muslims raping people in Europe, climate, climate change, yeah, there's hot. terrorism, ISIS, Fire climate change, climate change. Climate change. Yeah. Climate uh, change. Uh, so it didn't turn out to be true with the Great Lakes, but you know what did turn out to be true, by the way? Uh, energy plants being closed yep. and tens of thousands mm -hmm. of jobs lost due to government manipulation, price fixing, goods and commodities. There were taxes levied on all Americans disproportionately. By the yeah. way, disproportionately affecting the middle class as well when yeah. you talk about a lot of yeah. these so-called <laughs> green taxes. This is something that I think you would do well to listen to instead of now we've crossed this bridge. Yeah. Right? right. Hey, you guys have to plan for this. We guarantee you 100%, no doubt, record lows are going to get worse due to climate change. None of it is true. And this impacted economies and tens of thousands of people lost their job. At this point, you'd be better off saying, okay, well, maybe we were incorrect, but recalibrate. Instead, what the left continues to do is just say, well, the science is settled, as you see. Yeah. It makes me feel frustrated because, again, you can say I don't believe in gravity, but if you step off the cliff, you're going down. So we can say I oh don't boy. believe climate is changing, but it's based on science that's over 150 years old. It requires a whole system of people's research all leaning in the same direction, mm -hmm. all pointing to the same consequences. That's what we have with climate change as induced by human conduct. Do we use the same, by the way, same temperature uh, measurements as they did 150 years ago? Probably Seems not. Seems to me yeah. they might be a little bit different. Yeah, we're not as wrong opposed over here. to accusing people of being science denying bumpkins, how about you admit that you screwed up? And in the case of the Great Lakes, you screwed up on one of the big ones, okay? <laughs> That's a big deal. <laughs> it's a Great Lake. It's a great well, <laughs> Literally. There are several literally of them. One. Many Great Lakes. <laughs> you screwed up many lakes of greatness. By the way, the people who lived through the timeline uh, in its entire these people lived through the projected terror, the uncertainty, yeah. prepared for the doomsday scenarios that you projected only to come out of the other side and to see that they would have been completely unscathed if not for you. You're the one who <laughs> scathed them. They don't believe you anymore. Instead of insulting them, you need to earn their trust back. And I know many of you in the climate, uh, climate change alarmism camp uh, claim that it's not your job to convince anyone because of uh, scientific consensus. Uh, yeah. But in this case, I would say that actually the burden of proof Absolutely. Given the previous climate models, given the previous predictions, I would say the burden of proof absolutely rests squarely on your shoulders. Not because of polls or consensus, but because of several observable and expensive life-costing hypotheses that proved to be completely untrue. In other words, because of science. Okay, if you like this video, you know, you watch videos on YouTube. If I were Jimmy Kimmel, if I were Stephen Colbert, or Trevor Noah, I would tell you to subscribe. But I have no corporate overlords who demand that I do this demeaning promo. I do the demeaning promo because I choose to. Subscribe or hit the notification bell because I need you. I need you. Please do it.